today. Intel's desktop ARC GPU is spotted. AMD just released the weirdest GPU. NVIDIA's RTX 4000 brings back Titan. AMD just made history. And Intel's 13,900K performance is insane. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, one of Intel's upcoming desktop GPUs have been spotted in a benchmark. Originally found and shared by Tom Apisak, we have a user bench benchmark. And when we look, we can see that it comes with a 24-core, 32-thread CPU, which means we're looking at Intel's next-gen Raptor Lake, likely the 13,900K. And here you can see that it comes with a 2.4 GHz base clock and an average 4.6 GHz boost. Of course, this is likely an early benchmark, but really, the main focus is the GPU. We'll get to the CPU in just a few. Now you can see that the GPU is an ARC A770. This obviously means that Intel may finally be gearing up to release their desktop cards. Let's hope so at least because things won't go well for ARC if either AMD or Nvidia release their next gen cards before Intel. And when you're ready to learn how PCs actually work, there's no place I recommend more than Brilliant. And they've sponsored this video so I can tell you all about it. For one, Brilliant is an online learning tool that was actually made to teach the STEM field. So whether it's computer science, math, or science, Brilliant is the best place to learn. But it gets even better because they don't just teach you by explaining it. They show you and have you do it yourself with fun, interactive challenges. So you learn the best way. Here they explain how computers can learn with feedback. Each tile is a color that correlates with how far the key is from that tile. Using this instead of random guesses gets you to the key much faster. And they've got a ton of amazing courses just like this. What's even better is that you can try them for free when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermail. And the first 200 of you who visit the link get 20% off the annual premium. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermail. Next up for today, AMD just released a brand new GPU that's really odd, specifically the Radeon 6700 non-XT. Now you may have noticed that I didn't say RX 6700, and that wasn't an accident. Originally starting as a leak just yesterday, it's now been confirmed by the company's AIB partner, Sapphire. As you can see, there's a new GPU called the Radeon 6700. It's clearly a desktop card, but it comes with essentially the same specs as the 6700M. The card comes with 10 gigabytes of GDDR6 and 2304 stream processors or 36 compute units. It also gets a gaming clock of 2230 megahertz and a boost of 2495. Currently, there isn't an MSRP for it, but it may be an OEM only part. Really, I'm not sure. That could be why they took off the RX, but they could have just called it the RX 6700 since there isn't already a non-XT variant. Either way, it's clearly a real product. It's just odd that there wasn't an announcement from AMD reviews or anything. As Video Cards points out, it's similar to their crypto mining model, so maybe it at least means Sapphire has decided to put their focus back on gaming. Who knows? Next up, it looks like Nvidia may be bringing back Titan GPUs, or at least something along those lines. In a new tweet from well-known leaker copite 7 Kimmy, there's a second full-fat 8102 GPU. But instead of 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X, this monster has 48 gigabytes at 24 gigabits per second and an unbelievable 900 watt TGP. He does claim that he's not sure if it'll become a product or not, but it's at least possible, given the test board has two 16-pin connectors. He seems to think it could be a Titan GPU with 800 plus watts. Not only that, but Igor's lab recently shared what should be the PCB for Nvidia's upcoming 4090. Now, I will say that according to Igor's lab, AIB partners don't currently have actual 8102 test boards. They really only know the basics right now, so just about anything we've heard on performance is likely targets by Nvidia meaning we likely won't see real concrete performance until next month. Right now, they're working with electrical and thermal design, which is why we're mostly seeing specs and power draw leaks right now. Finally, given Igor's timeline, we should see mass production begin in August or September, which makes the release information from video cards look quite accurate. Either way, let's hope everyone's electrical grid is ready for the thousands of new space heaters coming. And next up, AMD along with the United States have officially made history using the new all AMD powered Frontier supercomputer that was made for the US Department of Energy's Oak Ridge National Laboratory. It was able to register a sustained 1.1 exaflops of performance on the Linpack benchmark. 
For those who don't know, that's over one quintillion floating point operations per second, and it makes the Frontier supercomputer the first to break the exaflop barrier. That obviously puts it at the number one spot in the world. In fact, Frontier is faster than the next seven fastest supercomputers combined. It runs on the HPE Cray EX235A architecture and is powered by an unbelievable 37,888 MI250X GPUs and 9,472 EPIC CPUs for a total of 602,112 CPU cores. Oh, and it comes with 700 petabytes of storage and uses 90 miles of networking cables. Basically, Frontier is the definition of performance. Unfortunately, it still can't play Crisis. And lastly for today, Intel's 13th gen performance looks to have leaked. In a new tweet from known leaker Raichu, who leaked performance for Intel's 12th gen Alder Lake, he claims a single core score of over 2300 in Geekbench 5. Now, he only says it's possible and doesn't specifically say Raptor Lake, but as you can see by the comments, everyone pretty well knows he means Raptor Lake. Let's just say that's a very nice boost over 12th gen. In fact, the 12900K typically gets around 2000 in Geekbench, so we're talking a 15% boost in single core performance. And given Raptor Lake is upping their core count, this could spell trouble for AMD's next gen Ryzen. Of course, they're only upping the little cores, but still, AMD isn't moving up in their core count at all, according to AMD's Frank Azor. Now, he was asked specifically for the launch, but the way he answered it really makes it sound like AMD won't have more than 16 cores for Ryzen 7000 ever. The Socket AM5 initial launch, 16 cores, is that, that is that max for the platform at launch? Uh, yes, yeah, 16 cores is the maximum configuration. Plus, let's not forget that Zen 4 only has two chiplets for their CPUs, so I don't see them ever being able to move up. At the end of the day, AMD could be in big trouble, unless that 15% boost they mentioned is flat wrong. But even then, with 16 cores, AMD really could have a tough battle against Raptor Lake. Time, as always, will tell. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for Intel's next-gen CPUs? Or what about NVIDIA bringing back Titan? Let me know down in the comments below. And make sure to check out Brilliant down in the description below. And as always, have a great day!